This lesson continues from the previous one, Router Setup and Basics. If you want to follow along with the examples, you'll need an app with the router package installed, along with some folders and files. We have three folders called Router, Views, and Components. In the Views directory, we have two components called Homepage and Users Page. Each of them have a heading that allows us to easily identify which one is loaded. In the router directory, we have our router setup file called index.js. Inside it, we have two lazy loaded named routes that link to the home and users pages. In the root app component, we router link to the routes and show the router view below that. An application will often need to pass parameters to a page through a route. As an example, let's say we have a blog where users can log in and write articles. We'll need to have some way of identifying each user, like an ID, so that we can create an author bio page. We can do that by adding dynamic segments inside our paths. A dynamic segment can have any name we want, but it must be prefixed with a colon operator. To demonstrate, let's create another page called user single in the views directory. Its template can just have a heading that identifies the page for now. In the router's index.js file, we'll add a root to user single with a segment called ID. If we run the example in the browser and add something after user in the URL, it will load the user single page. When we use roots with parameters, we can link to them by adding a key to the link object called params. This key takes an object with all the parameters we have in the root path. The parameter must be the same one that we defined in the root, and the value is whatever will be in the URL. To demonstrate, let's add a parameterized link to our example in the users page. If we navigate to the user's page in the browser and click on the link, it will load the user single component. In a more realistic scenario, we'll have users defined in an array and loop over them to create links. If we go to the browser and click on a user link, it'll load the user single page and show the corresponding user. The view router gives us access to the root instance object. On this object is the params property that we can use to access the parameter from the URL. The property name has to be the same as the one we define in the root path. As an example, to access the ID parameter in the user single page, we'll add $root.params.id to a paragraph in the template block. If we go to the browser and click on any of the users, it will load up the user single page and display the user's ID. We can tell view that we want to handle our parameters as props by setting the props option in the root definition to true. To demonstrate, let's set our user single page to handle its parameters as props. View will now pass the parameter to the user single page as a prop, which means we can handle it as a prop instead of using the instance object. If we go to the browser and test a user, it will look exactly the same as before. But, now we handle the data internally as a prop. The view router also allows us to use query parameters in our routes. These are the key value pairs that come after the question mark in a URL. Query parameters are constructed just like root parameters, except we use the query option with an object that contains the key value pair. As an example, let's add a query parameter to our user links for the user's name. If we run the example in the browser and click on a user, the URL will show that the query parameter has been added. Multiple parameters are separated with a comma. In the URL, they'll be separated with an AND symbol. 
To access a query parameter, we use the root instance object with the query property and the name of the property we want to access. As an example, let's pull the user's name from the query parameter and display it on the user single page. We can do it directly in the template or store it in something like a data or computed property first. We'll demonstrate with a computed property. If we run the example in the browser and click on one of the users, it will show the user's name alongside their ID. The router allows us to nest child roots in our main roots. To do this, we add a children option to a root that takes an array of child root objects. For example, let's say we don't want user single to be its own page anymore. We want to load it inside the user's page and display the user details below the list of users. For that, all we need to do is create a children array in the user's root and put the user single root inside that array. But, if we load it up in the browser, it won't work. That's because view doesn't know where we want to display the child root yet, so we need to add a router view where we want the child roots to be rendered. In our example, we'll add it to the user's page. If we run the example in the browser and click on a user, it'll show that user's details below the list. Roots can be nested multiple levels deep, depending on your needs. View allows us to have multiple router views in one component, provided we name them. We can then set up the components that are loaded for each router view with the components option. This option takes an object with key value pairs where the key is the router view's name and the value is the component to load for that router view. Like with slots, we can have one unnamed router view. If we do, we specify its key as default. Let's see an example. By default, the router view in the root app component shows the home page. Let's add a second router view with the name users. Then we'll modify the home route to load both the home and users pages in their respective router views. If we run the example in the browser, it'll load both components instead of just the home page. Because views are loaded dynamically, a page won't scroll back to the top when we navigate to a new route. View gives us the scroll behavior option to customize such behavior. This option is a method that automatically gets three parameters. The first parameter, to, represents the route we just navigated to. From is the route we just came from. And saved position is the absolute position of where we were on the previous page with the top and left properties. The method returns an object with values for the top and left properties. If we want to scroll to the top, we return both as zero. When we navigate to a new route and a page loads, saved position will return null. But if we click on the back button in the browser, it'll return the absolute value of where we were on that page. If we want to return the user to that spot, we can do a null check to see if the user has clicked on the back button, and if so, return that saved position. Let's see an example. In the root app component, we have a spacer div before the router view, so we can demonstrate the behavior. In the router config, we can add the scroll behavior method that returns the saved position. To more clearly see what's going on, we add a console log of the saved position parameter. When we run the example in the browser, the console log will show zero for both top and left properties. If we navigate to users, it'll show null. Then, if we scroll down and click on a user, it will jump back to the top of the page like we want. The console log will show null again because we navigated to a new route. 
Then, if we click on the browser's back button, it'll take us to the bottom of the previous page, where we click the user's link. This time, the console log will show a positive value for the top property. In the next video, we'll learn how to execute custom logic before or after a user goes through a route with root guards. Thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next one.